Good morning ladybirds and gentlemen. I'm guessing these fellas are looking for somewhere to hibernate. Is that a harlequin? I don't know. Anyway, let's not get too distracted by the wildlife. Uh, today's vlog is just going to be a little bit of an info vlog for a new friend I've made uh, called Chris who's building a canning machine. It's the chap who sent me the kombucha a couple of weeks back, about a month ago. And we've been talking about putting an inline carbonator. Um, so you could probably fill directly from a tank uh, and fill carbonated beverages rather than can conditioning like we do for the for the beer. Um, obviously his kombucha is crystal clear, I would imagine most of the time. And I would have thought that something like this would be also applicable if you wanted to do some hard seltzers or you know, even fizzy wine and can your own. So, what we did discuss, I'll just come through the marquee, is using an inline post mix carbonator. Now, we have one, it doesn't belong to us, it belongs to a company called Swallow. Yeah, she really does. Excuse the racket. We've got Tom upstairs cooking some amazing food. Right, let's get in here first. We're in. Right, so if I go through to the cellar, first things first. Oh, lovely stuff. Have we got enough, do you think? Oh, I'm distracted again by all this amazing scram. Oh, disgusting. Making myself hungry. Right, so. The idea being, I'll just turn the fan off on the cellar cooler for a moment so we can hear ourselves think. So this is the machine. Well, actually, no. This is the post-mix dispenser and chiller. So at the bottom we have the syrups. They go into the um, doodah. Uh, cooling pipes and they are in here mixed with via probably this pump I don't know they are mixed with carbonated water which comes from this little machine up here where yeah the salt coming in through the wall off the main road is eating into this galvanized plate isn't it anyway a little bit of info I don't know if you can read any of that might be important might not and uh, and yeah, pump time out. Do a little Okay, that's just a little bit of info. But yes, this machine has a mains water feed blue pipe here, and that goes into what I can only assume is the carbonator itself. And then I reckon that this will then go. Let me have a look. Yeah, this is the CO2 pipe here. So the CO2 is fed into this little tank. And there's a little blow off valve up there. And then the, this pipe comes out of that little tank and into our post mix machine. So this fella on the wall is providing soda water essentially. And that soda water, that's what happens, that soda water then goes in here where it's chilled and sent through one of these pipes, not sure which, up to the bar where we can get either any of our post mixers. See we've only got three on and there is space for a fourth and here is the coil for it but I never noticed that, they've not supplied a pipe in the python for a fourth. That's very odd, isn't it? Yeah, very strange. So, let me have a look on here. Soda. Soda, research, out, carb, water, out. So, that strikes me as... Lemonade and two colas. Carb, water, out. So I'm thinking on my feet a little bit here, but it doesn't appear like we have 
a carb water out anywhere. But we must do because we get carbonated water. Maybe it comes through this pipe here. We get carbonated water up at the bar. I've probably lost everybody by now. So I'm, I should have come and figured this out beforehand. But essentially what happens is these three post mix, a Pepsi, a Diet Pepsi and a lemonade get sent upstairs via these three pipes, chilled, and to accompany that is carbonated soda water, which is carbonated via this machine. And then up at the top, it's dispensed on the bar. Now, you could wire this in to force carbonate and chill beer or kombucha or hard seltzer or wine before it got to the canning machine and then the canning machine works as normal but filling cans with fizzy product instead of still. The issue we've got is would it be too foamy because it's been immediately carbonated and Chris mentioned in a message that when they force carbonate in keg they generally tend to leave it overnight because if they use it straight away there's too much foam on the fill head and I can only assume that's because the carbonation, the CO2 hasn't had time to settle into the liquid properly and it's still relatively uh, free to come back out as a gaseous form rather than being sat in between the molecules of H2O which is I think how it works. So let's go upstairs and have a look at this post mix and how foamy it actually is. So I'll just turn the lights off as we go. Oh, you're lucky there's no chefs stripping off at the top of the stairs this morning. Which we quite often get. Oh, sweets. There's the trouble. <laughs> right, let's get a glass like that. And you'll see that it doesn't have a dispense head on it at the moment because that will have been cleaned overnight. So here it is. So we'll stick this dispense head on here. Framing. Right, so first things first. You'll notice on the back we've got the three lines and a spare. I wonder if the uh, if the fourth one actually comes up. There's one there, look, that's just been folded over. I bet you that's the orange line. And then there's also this here, this type of little manifold thing. I've not actually had a good look at that. And then we've got the python with the little hose, the connector on the end. So let's just have some soda on its own. And you'll see that it looks relatively foamy, but not too bad. And we get a good fill there, so that works. But of course, soda is notoriously uh, free of any sugars. So it's not going to foam because there's, no, there's nothing in there to create foaming. It's just water and CO2. So let's try lemonade. So lemonade's got sugar in it, of course. Let's see how this performs. And we can see immediately that we've got a huge amount of foam and very little liquid. Now this might be to do with the way the liquid is dispensed. So it is designed to be mixed. There are a load of little holes around the outside of this. If you watch this, you see, you have the in the middle, pointing like in a diagonal manner, is the syrup, and on the outside is the soda. So I would imagine that's purposely introducing turbulence to mix the liquid, otherwise you do tend to have a situation where the, um, 
the solder doesn't mix in correctly. Now, if I just throw this away, mm, or drink it, rather, I'll see. <laughs> Hope you're learning something through this, because I am. I'll see if we can do that again, but without the nozzle and without the turbulence of the mixing, and we'll do it with cola. And we'll see if we get some stratification, some layering in there. Right, made a bit of a mess there. But you'll see, you'll see that all of the syrup is at the bottom of the glass and at the top, just get a bit of a focus on there, that's it. The syrup sat at the bottom and at the top it's very thin indeed. It's kind of just soda water with a bit of the syrup mixed into it. So I think that turbulence happens on purpose, so you get a homogenous mix of uh, your syrup and and your carbonated soda water so maybe it's it will work on a canning machine I don't have one of these machines spare so I think we're gonna just have to leave this experimentation down to Chris and if he can make it work then maybe we move forwards and start to introduce something like that um, on our can machine but you can clearly see now at the bottom the separation about there of the syrup and then above it yeah all the soda water so there you go I think that's all we're gonna do today it's 12 minutes of me talking about pop and carbonation so hopefully it's at least allowed you to understand the process of post mix now I'm going to have to clean up the mess that I've made on the side. Cheers for watching. See you on the next one.